the Joe Rogan experience. Damn, don't get as much as he carried a deer. Every time I see that now, I'll be thinking, how do you carry a deer on your neck? If he did, he'd never it. tell anybody. <laughs> he would have Lyme disease and just run 150 miles until the Lyme disease died. <laughs> run it out. You know yeah, I mean? he's a psycho. Yeah, he, there, you, There's discipline, and then there's what that guy has. And this guy, like, too. Oh, God. yeah, Goggins. He's another one, man. He's another one. It's like these guys, they're, like, they're, they exhibit this next-level toughness that makes you reexamine what you're doing. Like, you think you're tough, and then you find out, like, Goggins, what did we say he ran, like, 28, 100 fucking mile runs in a row, something uh, insane like it's, that? It's a lot. It's why? More than one's a lot. So. Why? Because it's to, to you prove run, it. When you run over two miles, I look like, why? Like, I, get, <laughs> I get text message from Goggins and say, stay hard, motherfucker. <laughs> this is, I'm checking in on you right now. <laughs> you see All a text, but you see him yelling. There. You hear him yelling <laughs> yes, in the text. Exactly, Have man. you seen the um, documentary on uh, Netflix, Losers? No, I haven't. Oh, look it up. It's one on there. Uh, the guy called Lost in the Desert. It's a guy who runs. It's a desert run. They do. Can't remember what country, but he go out there. And he was just so men, so obsessed with winning. Like it's a thousand people running through this desert, but it's a course they have to follow. When the wind get bad, they got check ins or whatnot. They're supposed to follow. And this guy, he was so obsessed. Like he wasn't checking. He was like trying to take shortcuts. And like if I go this way, I'll find it. And he ended up going off the course. And when it cleared up, he was way off course. But he was so obsessed. I still got to finish. He was out there for like. Five or some five or six days, yeah. And they was talking about how they announced to his family. They told his family, your husband's dead. We can't find you. Find him. They had helicopters going all over the place. He went to a point where he started drinking his own piss. He found his cave that's full of bats. He started ripping his heads off, mixing them up, drinking it to survive. Drinking the bat juice? Bat juice, mixing it up. And he, like, at one point heard a helicopter coming over. He took all his clothes, all his gear, dug a hole, and set it all on fire, hoping they would see him. As the fire went up, the wind blew it out. So he didn't get seen. So he out there with no gear, no nothing, in the middle of nowhere. And he survived. He ended up getting back. And his oh, mind says, like, I have to shit. finish. He said, everybody left. He said, when he got there, the checkpoint was gone. But his friend had flew back to find him. And sure enough, oh my God. He, his friend was there, found him in the desert. Down. Yeah, it's called, the, losers on the doctrine is called Losers here. Thank you. Losers in the episode is Lost in the Desert. The whole show is good. All the little things on it is good. But that Lost in the Desert one, he ended up divorcing his wife. His wife left him because after that, he still went back. He came home and she's like, you're not going back. He's like, I'm doing it again. I have to finish. And now he still does it. He divorced his wife his, for that? His wife left him. Well, his wife left him because <laughs> you got a family. When she left, right. when he left, she was mad. Like, what about your family? People die on this. What happened? He's like, don't worry. This is this. I love this. I have to do it. When he came back and his wife was like, we're not doing it again. He was like, yes, I am. Like, you just was on, like, he was pretty much dead. They put him in the hospital. They found him and everything. Lonely and he Sahara. ended up doing it again. Morrow Prosperi. Wow. The survival story of moral prosperity. Disoriented after a sandstorm in the Sahara Desert, this Italian ultramarathon runner, runner walked nearly 200 miles to safety. Fuck. But he's Italian. He's probably going to get divorced anyway. <laughs> hey, what are you going to do? <laughs> those, those fucking guys are animals. Yeah, when you see that, you're going to be like, after, I want you to direct DM me after you watch it. I will. Think. Like that was. I will see it. When he ate the bad juice, I was like, "That I would just kill myself there." I'm not. <laughs> like he was literally biting their heads off, just in a cave, dark, no light. But he could. He was feeling from. He could see their eyes. He grab, oh, bite the head, and rip it up with Christ. a stick, and just drink. That's how he would survive Ugh. in a cave. What kind of diarrhea did that guy have? I don't care. Was drinking bat. I guess so. He even killed. He tried to kill himself actually. Really? He, but he was so dehydrated, he cut his wrist. He said he had the last sharp thing he had. He cut his wrist with, it and went to bed hoping he was gonna wake, like not wake up dead. And he woke up. He was like, "What in the world?" He said, and "That was my sign that I wasn't supposed to die." He said, "When he got to the hospital, when they saw his wrist. They said you were too di dehydrated." To, to bleed. kill yourself. He didn't have anything. He couldn't bleed. He healed Jesus up. Jesus Christ. And he said that was it. And he was walking. He said, I felt myself faint. I just kept telling myself, I'm here. I have to make it. I have to make it. And I have to make it. And he said he finally, like, he see, like, some girl walking out there in the desert. He started walking away. She was going. And then the army, whatever arm, wherever they was at, the army out there come get him. And they got guns and shit. He think he's going to die. And ended up taking him to the hospital. And he woke up. He had IVs and everything. And they recovered wow. him and took him back to his family. It's a crazy story. Like, all of them was good, but that was my brother called me like, watch that, bro. If you got a mentality like that, you are the fucking man. Watch that. Two days in, he stumbled into an abandoned Muslim shrine where he noticed some bats huddled together. Prosperi grabbed a handful of them, cut off their heads with a knife, and then sucked out their insides to drink their blood and quench his thirst. Eventually, he did his vampire act on 20 bats. When another three days passed with no signs of rescue, he slit his wrists and waited to die, but his blood had thickened due to dehydration so it wouldn't drain out. Fuck, man. 
Like that's some Goggins and Cam. They need to get yeah. together and do a podcast and talk yeah. about that. Like that was. They wouldn't have cut their wrist. No. <laughs> they ain't that tough. <laughs> no. No, they, oh, wouldn't, they, wouldn't, they, they wouldn't have tried to just, kill themselves. You're right. They would have just kept going. Mm-hmm. I think the, those those kind of people, those ultra marathon people, it's a different 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 breed of human. You know, they it's like everything has. There's levels, right, to everything. There's levels. You, you've, you've experienced it in your own life where you toughened up, you became a, a stronger person, a harder person, and then there's levels past that, and then there's levels past that. And especially for people that have one solitary thing they do, like ultra marathons. They're all the skinny dudes who can just keep going. Don't they just it. keep going. It's just it's, it's the, the pulling it off, the crossing the line. And knowing that you did something that seemed almost impossible, so so titanically, epically difficult to do, that so few people can ever do it. When they do, they're talking about running a 500 mile race now, because they did the uh, Moab 230 and they had the Bigfoot 200. There are all these people that are putting on these races, they're like, okay, we could do 240. Let's see if we could do 500. So now they're talking about doing a 500 mile race. It's next level. It's hard for me to run a 5K. I hear you. Man. Well, you're a big fella, too. <laughs> I mean, I could do it, but I did it in college, and I've never <laughs> ran like nothing calculated like you had to pay due again. It was like a charity we had to do for college. Nope, never again. Have you ever thought about doing something like that? Like yeah, I'm going to run 5K. I ain't finna pay to go run. <laughs> <laughs> it's like going skydive. Why am I jumping out of a perfectly good plane to go on the ground? Yeah, I why can go do you have plane. to pay to run a 5K? Like, what are they? Are they organizing it, I guess? I guess so most of them like, go to foundations and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. But even then, like, you heard about the foundations that take money. I don't trust you do. none. You do hear about so them like, sometimes. I'm not paying no hundred some bucks to go run 13.1 miles. Right. I'm cool. People know it's, <laughs> it's more the fact that I can say I did it. I can say I did it on my own. Yeah, <laughs> I, I go run thirteen point one miles, I and I did it. Just check my phone. You know what Look, I mean? thirteen miles. We're good. You know Drive what I mean? home. <laughs>